Welcome to Furniture Industry News, your go-to podcast for the latest updates and insights into the furniture industry. Today, we have an exciting lineup of topics that will keep you informed and ahead in the game. We'll dive deep into key trends shaping the market, explore some of the latest industry challenges, and take a closer look at interesting consumer behaviors that are driving change. Whether you're a retailer, manufacturer, or simply passionate about furniture, this episode has something valuable for you. So sit back, relax, and let's get started on this informative journey into the world of furniture. A recent study has shown that a significant majority of Americans, a whopping 78%, shop at small businesses for home decor at least once a month. This trend is particularly led by millennials, with 80% of them frequenting these local stores monthly. The findings highlight an interesting shift in consumer behavior towards supporting smaller retailers. One of the primary reasons behind this trend is a strong desire to boost the local economy, cited by 64% of respondents. People love the idea of their money helping their own communities thrive. Additionally, 47% of consumers are on the hunt for unique products that they can't find in larger big box stores. This search for uniqueness often leads them to smaller businesses which are known for carrying more distinctive and individualized items. Another important factor is the perceived higher quality of goods. About 43% of those surveyed believe that small businesses offer better quality products, which is a compelling reason for them to choose local over big chain retailers. Moreover, 40% of consumers enjoy the sense of community connection that comes with shopping locally. There's something special about knowing the shop owner or bumping into neighbors while you shop. When it comes to gender, the study observed that home decor is a particularly popular purchase among women, ranking second only to jewelry. On average, consumers spend about $128 a month at small businesses, with millennials and baby boomers spending even more, averaging $135 and $130 per month, respectively. Interestingly, Furniture tops the list in terms of the amount spent per purchase among consumers. This surpasses even groceries, which usually dominate spending categories. While many still prefer shopping in physical stores, the digital age has changed the landscape. Around 31% of consumers stated they wouldn't consider a small business that doesn't have a website, with Gen Z being the most adamant about this, showing a preference for the convenience of online shopping. Social media also plays a crucial role in how consumers discover small businesses. Platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube are significant channels for small business discovery, supplementing traditional methods like word of mouth from friends and family or checking out online reviews. These insights offer a clear message. Small businesses are not only surviving but thriving due to their ability to provide unique, high-quality products while fostering community engagement and leveraging online presence. This consumer shift represents a valuable opportunity for the furniture industry to capitalize on these trends by focusing on niche offerings and building stronger community ties. Ashley Furniture has announced a new surcharge on all of their products, citing significant challenges in the global shipping market as the primary reason. This surcharge, which will take effect from July 15th, ranges from 1% for domestic goods and bedding to 3% for all other products. This development is notable as it affects both dealers and, ultimately, consumers with an increase in prices across the catalog. Several factors contribute to this decision. The surge in demand for global shipping has created a shortage of capacity, leading to higher shipping costs. Major ports, including significant hubs like Singapore, are facing severe backlogs due to congestion. The disruptions in the Suez Canal and a historically low average vessel speed have exacerbated the situation further. John Mask, the Senior Vice President of Strategic Sales at Ashley Furniture, outlined these challenges in a letter to dealers. He emphasized that securing the necessary container volume to continue operations has come at an unexpected higher cost, affecting the pricing strategy. Consequently, while they are working diligently to navigate these issues, the added costs are being transferred down the supply chain. Interestingly, Ashley Furniture is not alone in this approach. FlexSteel, another major player in the industry, implemented a similar surcharge on June 19th, driven by the same underlying challenges. According to FlexSteel's Vice President of Sales, David Crimmins, 
Obtaining capacity at contracted rates has become increasingly difficult, forcing the company to pursue open market rates to ensure continuous flow and strong service levels. Recent data shows that spot freight rates have surged by over 60% in just seven weeks. For instance, the average rates from Shanghai to Los Angeles are now sitting at $6,441, while the rates from Shanghai to New York have risen to $7,552. There is currently no indication that these rates will decrease anytime soon. Ashley Furniture has stated that they will reassess their pricing structure when container freight costs stabilize. However, until then, dealers and consumers alike will need to adapt to the new surcharges added to their orders. This move underscores the broader challenges faced by the furniture industry amid ongoing global supply chain disruptions. Recently, we came across a fascinating case study in the world of furniture retail that underscores the impact of customer service and knowledgeable sales associates. Picture this. A consumer initially planned to purchase a $700 King mattress set from a local warehouse club. However, this straightforward shopping trip took an unexpected turn. The story begins with the consumer, a baby boomer, ready to buy a budget-friendly mattress. However, instead of heading straight to the warehouse, she visited a local furniture store where she had previously worked with a retail sales associate to buy a custom sofa and love seat. During one of these consultations, the RSA casually asked a simple yet powerful question, is there something else you need for your home? This led our shopper to admit that, yes, she was indeed in the market for a new mattress. Seizing the moment, the RSA guided her to the mattress section. As they explored various options, the RSA provided valuable insights about fabrics, frames, and the different types of mattresses available. The engaging and informative interaction convinced her to reconsider her initial plan. Ultimately, she chose a luxurious $3,000 King mattress set, more than four times her initial budget. This purchase decision wasn't based only on the quality of the mattress, but also on the trust and rapport built with the RSA. She felt confident and informed, knowing she was making a worthwhile investment. This story doesn't just highlight an impressive upsell. It showcases the importance of personal customer service. The RSA's expertise and the ability to engage meaningfully with the consumer made all the difference. Typical warehouse clubs often lack this personalized touch making it harder to convert potential buyers into high-value sales. In a broader context, this case underscores the critical role that skilled sales associates play in the retail landscape. They're not just there to process transactions, but to educate, connect, and ultimately guide customers toward making the best choices for their needs. Personal interactions like these can lead to significant sales and, more importantly, satisfied and loyal customers who are thrilled with their purchases. So... Next time you think about how to boost sales in a competitive market, remember the power of personalized service and knowledgeable staff. Sometimes it really is the human touch that makes all the difference. When we talk about value propositions, many retailers might mention the importance of price and product quality. While these are certainly important, today's marketplace requires a broader understanding of what value truly means to consumers. In the past, Retailers competed mainly against other brick-and-mortar stores within their own communities. Price, product assortment, and customer service were the primary differentiators. But now, the competition landscape has changed dramatically. Retailers face competition from not just local stores, but also from e-commerce giants, direct-to-consumer brands, and a myriad of online marketplaces. At its core, a value proposition is about highlighting what makes your offerings unique. But today, it's also about clearly articulating how your products can improve your customers' lives. Take mattresses, for example. It's not just about selling a product that aids in sleeping. It's about conveying the benefits of a good night's sleep, such as better health and enhanced daily productivity. By shifting the conversation from simply discussing product features and prices to discussing lifestyle improvements, Retailers can create a more compelling narrative. This is crucial for attracting younger consumers who are looking for more than just a transaction. They're looking for products that resonate with their values and enhance their daily lives. So, what can you do to redefine your value proposition? Start by understanding the broader lifestyle benefits your products offer. 
Whether you sell a comfy couch that transforms family movie nights or a stylish table that becomes the centerpiece of a dinner party, make these benefits the focal point of your marketing. Use storytelling in your advertising to show how these pieces fit into a consumer's life, not just their home. Moving beyond discounts and extended payment plans, we need to engage in deeper conversations about lifestyle enhancement. By doing this, retailers can not only stand out in a crowded market, but also forge stronger emotional connections with their customers. This is the kind of relationship that goes beyond one-time transactions and leads to lasting loyalty. In essence, aligning your value proposition with the lifestyle improvements your furniture offers can transform how customers perceive your brand. It's not just about what your furniture is, it's about what it does for them. This approach will help you foster a closer connection with the modern, savvy consumer who is looking for more than just a good deal. When customers are ready to make a furniture purchase, what often holds them back? It's usually the sticker shock when they see the final price. They've picked out the perfect pieces and fallen in love with them, but when it comes time to pay, the total cost makes them pause. This is where offering financing options like private label credit cards can make a huge difference between closing the sale and losing it. Private label credit cards come with perks that general purpose cards simply can't match. For instance... You can offer special promotions like no interest if the balance is paid in full within a certain period or a reduced interest rate over a certain number of months. These terms are often more attractive to customers than the high interest rates of their general credit cards. Research has shown that customers who use a private label credit card for their furniture purchases tend to spend 106% more than those who use a general credit card. But the benefits of a private label card extend beyond just the initial sale. Once a customer is approved, they have a line of credit specific to your store, and they'll walk away with a card bearing your store's name. This not only fosters customer loyalty, but also leads to repeat business. Statistics show that over 32% of customers who buy furniture with a Wells Fargo private label credit card make another purchase spending an average of $2,510 after their initial purchase. This repeated spending helps bolster your bottom line significantly. Now, once you've decided to implement a private label credit card program, how do you choose the right promotional offers and term lengths? Generally, longer financing terms correlate with larger average ticket sizes. For example, Wells Fargo Home Furnishings registered trademark credit card customers who use no interest if paid in full or 0% APR with equal payments plan tend to have higher average ticket sizes, the longer the financing term. The Wells Fargo Home Furnishings Registered Trademark Credit Card Program is specifically designed to meet the needs of furniture retailers. This is why over 92% of their merchants agree that Wells Fargo is easy to do business with. They offer dedicated support, powerful online tools to streamline applications and transactions, and a variety of special promotions aimed at growing your business. By offering such tailored financing options, you turn hesitant browsers into confident buyers, making the purchasing process smoother and more appealing. This strategy doesn't just make the customer's dream home a reality. It also boosts your sales and fosters long-term loyalty. It's a win-win scenario for both the retailer and the customer. Thank you for listening to this episode of Furniture Industry News. We hope you found these insights valuable and useful for navigating the current trends and challenges in the furniture industry. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast for more industry updates, expert opinions, and the latest news that can help you stay ahead of the curve. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your network and help us spread the knowledge. Until next time, keep innovating, stay informed, and continue to make a positive impact in the furniture world. Thank you for being a part of our community.